Here's what I tell my family and friends, and really anybody that will listen to me, is that you can be scammed a lot of different ways. I mean, traditionally we think about social engineering and email phishing, but it can be done on a website. It can be done to social engineering. It can come through uh, a phone, SMS, text message. It can come in real life. Somebody can scam you in real life. And what I try to teach everybody I know is that there really are two or three traits of most scams. The first trait is, is that the message, uh, no matter how it arrives, whether it's text message or in person or social media or whatever, that message arrives unexpectedly. The, the scammer is reaching out to you most of the time. Number two, the sender, regardless of who they're pretending to be, are asking you to do something that you've never done before for that requester. So they're you know, asking you to, you know, to click on a link and download a file for that particular requester, and that requester has never asked you to do that before, or to buy gift cards, or to open and read a document, or to activate content. Whatever they're asking you to do, you may have done before, but not for that particular requester. So if any message arrives to you unexpectedly, asking you to do something you've never done before for that requester, and especially if it has a what we call a stressor event where they're like, you need to do it now or you're going to miss out on something, you're going to lose money, you're going to miss a discount, your account is going to be closed or hacked or locked out. Any message having those two or three traits arriving unexpectedly, asking you to do something the, the sender has never asked you to do before, and especially if it has that stressor event in it, any message with that should be treated as highly suspicious. It, it may be legitimate, but any message with those two or three common traits of most social, social engineering scams are far higher riskier than me other messages that don't have that. And if you get a message that has those two or three traits uh, that are common with most scams, you need to stop and think and research some other legitimate way. Call the, the sender on a known good phone number. Uh, don't click on the link in the email or the message. Go to the regular direct website directly with a known good URL. Uh, whatever you do, don't do whatever that action is until you've proven some other legitimate way that it's the right thing to do. So that's what you want to do is get a healthy skepticism of any message, no matter how it arrives, that arrives unexpectedly, asking you to do something new for that requester, especially if it's a stressor event. And any message arriving with that, I'm going to investigate before I do, and you should too.